What's good football fans? Back at you once again with another video. And I wanted to come on this afternoon and take a look at Jamin Davis's game film from that Jacksonville Jaguars game Sunday. And I'm going to be completely honest, coming into this, looking at this film, I thought for certain that I was going to be looking at just a, a train wreck in motion. But what I found was somewhere in between, there were there were some good and some bad. And of course, there were some in between where he was just, you know, in a different part of the play or whatever that had nothing to do with where the ball was going. You know, when Ron Rivera drafted Jamin Davis, I really thought that he was going to be able to come right on in as a rookie and be able to step into a role. I never saw him as a middle linebacker or a Mike linebacker. I never saw him, you know, as, as a guy to play that role. I felt like he was being forced into the wrong spot there kind of like you know square peg going in round hole and i always felt like there was you know a, a better role for him to be played on the outside but a lot of the issues that i was seeing last year had to do with him not being able to cover real well and less to do with him being able to you know defend against the run or maybe even pass rush so much even i don't believe we got like maybe one sack last year was all he got i believe but at six foot three, what is he like, 230, 235, somewhere around that area? You know, I, I expect a guy that's that big and that athletic to have some athleticism about him, you know, or some, some awareness with him as well. Now, I also realize that he's only 23 years old. But the one thing that I always try to pay attention to when I'm watching guys on film, especially young guys, is what their game speed is. How, how fast does their their mental attributes actually work with the rest of their body and move them. He actually runs a 4440, I think, something of that nature, which is fast on the track. But on the field, how fast does his body work along with his brain at the same time and be able to function and move across the field? What is his game speed? And that's a few things I'm gonna be looking for when I'm looking, you know, at his film today. And I'm gonna be looking for obvious mistakes that he makes. I don't think that there's really been all that much issue with his tackles, you know, his ability to be able to cover in passing situations, which has been the knock on him. And everybody, you know, thought, hey, th there was an issue last year. And Rivera has been asked directly about it a few times. And his response has always been that he's getting better or, you know, we're going to work with him or we're going to see where we are after this or whatnot. You know, Rivera is actually really good at deflecting, especially about Jamin Davis and I think that's because there's a little bit of pride there. He was a first round draft pick. You know, they took him, I'm not gonna say kind of high, it was actually just dead set in the middle. But at the same time, when you take somebody that high, you expect them to be able to contribute immediately, or you want them to contribute immediately at least. You don't want to take a guy that you might have to deem a project right out the box. Which is, I think, the reason why they didn't take that, that joke kid, that JOK kid. I can't remember his name now to save my life, but I know his initials. And I know that he looks nasty now in situational, um, you know, pass rushing. My view up to this point has been that I felt like the team has kind of ignored the need for a linebacker thinking that, well, we have Cole already and we have Jamin, so everything will be fine. And we're just going to run, you know, two linebacker sets, which is great to think about and, and theorize, but... You have to set yourself up to, 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 you know, be successful in all situations, which means that you need a third guy for at least some depth. And it cannot be somebody like John Bostick, which is, he's no better than Jamin is now without, def, you know, redefined characteristics, without a lot of work. John Bostick is no better as a veteran now than Jamin Davis is as a, as a second year, you know, rookie, basically. Of course, one thing you could say is, is that John Bostick plays special teams and he play, he does that well. He knows the system, so if somebody goes down, he can step right into it. I've always said that I think that Bostick is a better pass rusher than he is anything else. The problem is, is that Ron Rivera really doesn't ask that out of his linebackers, or at least he he you know he isn't going to ask him that you know, and and that's. That's going to be an issue in that situ that situation. And I've seen a lot of this film already as I was looking through Derek Forrest's stuff. And I can tell you, I'm not that impressed with the way that the linebackers look at all. I don't want to get into the overall thoughts, what I have on Cole Holcomb as of yet, because I want to see more. But, you know, it, it didn't look good as far as that's concerned as, as a group. You know, to me, they don't look like 
they're fired up and, and, and have a plan. Something's missing. I don't know. I'm going to look further at it when I get to look at this film here in a little bit. I just feel like any you know shortcomings that Davis has or Holcomb have at this point that I can, you know, I, I'm blaming on coaching at this point because they should be in the process at least of being coached up. And in my opinion, if they could get those linebackers right and get those corners right, this defense would be on a different level that we haven't seen yet. You know, this first clip caught my eye when I was making the Derek Forrest video. And I won't lie, at first I thought, what in the world is Jamin Davis doing? But to actually give him the complete benefit of the doubt, I don't really think it's him not knowing what he's doing as much as it is him watching the quarterback and that being i guess his job in this particular um play what i don't understand is why his awareness level is like on zero of not seeing kirk there just getting ready to go right behind him uh, basically trevor lawrence uses him as a pick so that the defender can't you know get to the ball or can't make a play on the on the, on the pass and honestly jamin never sees um, Kirk at all until the ball is already in the air and in his hands and if, if you watch the play you can see there's nobody else look I'll stop it there's nobody else in between Jamin and the rest of the players up here like here's Jamin right here there's nobody else in between him here's, here's Jamin there's nobody else between him and the quarterback that's that's a skill player you got this guy that's that's coming out this way that Cole Holcomb's going with, but Jamin's sitting here by himself. Nobody else is out there with him, and he continues to sit there, which is kind of odd, you know. And then, of course, Christian Kirk goes across the field like there's like there's no you know stopping him, but he just kind of stands there. Kirk goes right behind him. He never notices that you know he that he's there. It's, it's just odd to me that somebody that's that big and that quick could just i don't know man is, is his field speed really that low i'm gonna keep looking at that but it, here's the other angle yeah i mean he just he didn't even know that was happening like how could he be so unaware that that was going on that he just completely missed that he's watching trevor lawrence and like i said i can understand wanting to watch the quarterback and make sure that he doesn't make you look foolish and slip the pocket but wow now this play right here was one of a couple times that uh, Travis NTN just, he was right there, should have had a touchdown. This one wasn't NTN's fault. This one, he was overthrown. But Jamin is right there with him at first and then just catches the business and NTN turns the Jets on and he's just not there. Like, I, I, I mean, I, I don't understand like what's going on here when I watch the game film of this guy it looks like he's got concrete in his shoes like it's hard to see this guy runs to 40 and 44 you know like his 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 field speed is ultra low like he just got smoked right there and if he can't control that part of the field you know why is he out there why do we have him going out there in coverage i mean if that's not an overthrow that's a touchdown right there all day long i mean look at that it's 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 right there in your face glaring at you if that's not they they had to zip that up i mean there's no way that he could be doing that there's there's just there's no way watch it from this angle maybe it won't show it that good they didn't you know, I just wanted to show the angle on this. And if you can't see, there's Jamin right there. I'm actually surprised they didn't get more yardage on this play. But Jamin tries to go through that B gap and they do not let him through there. And in the process, you know, the, the, uh, the play's coming through the other gap and he just kind of gets trapped over there and is completely out of position in this play. And a, a guy that's, like I said before, that athletic shouldn't be getting played like that, but... He did. Now, while I'll point out the questionable or I'll point out what's questionable to me, I want to be steadfast and point out what I think are some of um, this guy's uh, strong points, and that's definitely his pass rushing skills. And I actually believe that they need to design a little bit more um, for him to be going after the quarterback. 
maybe overload a side or something. I don't know. Do something different. Uh, don't just send him by himself around the edge. He doesn't really. He's not really defined enough or redefined enough to be able to, to you know, to have any a whole lot of moves at this point. But I like the way that he moves towards the quarterback. Like he's he's he looks like he's built for that, and he actually does a pretty good job of fighting through blocks. So I believe that that's something that they need to work on getting him more involved with. I think that actually could be something they could find that he could do well, you know, from the outside. I still don't believe that he is going to be the middle linebacker of the future of this team. He's going to have to come a long ways. I don't believe that Cole Holcomb is that either. I believe that that player is not on the, 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 the roster. Again, I'll point things out that I like, and I like to see him, you know, against the run, he, rea he reacts real well. He does. He, he just doesn't react the same way to, to, to a passing situations, it seems. He's real good at fighting through blocks there, though. Here's another situation right here where he actually gets kind of carried out of the out of the, the play by a second level blocker. Looks like Cam Robinson up there, who is just a little bit of a monster. And instead of just falling backwards and falling out of the play, he actually steamrolls himself to getting the tackle on that play. Which, yes, they did gain a good little chunk of yardage. And yes, he was, you know, out of position there for a second but was able to still, you know, make the stop. Defoe over there, too. I like Derek Forrest, too, man. See, he rebounded well there and actually helped make that stop. And this right here is probably my most unfavorite defensive play here. I, I believe it's cover zero. And they send him on a, on a, uh, on a blitz. And I'm going to tell you, he almost gets around Travis Ntn. But some of you may remember from the, the, the Derek Forrest film, uh, I was I showed this play because Forrest actually makes a run at the quarterback there too, and Montez Sweat actually gets his arm in there and reaches out and touches the the shoulder as he goes to release, but uh, Derek Forrest is coming in and Jamin Davis is coming in too, man. There the, the pressure is on, and he he throws that up there, but if if you remember the the point I was trying to make by pointing out about William Jackson there was is that Jackson was actually beat on the play. If you watch that, boom, you see he's beat on the play. Like if if without that pressure, that's a that might be a touchdown. Again, I'm trying to see things that I like about this guy. And this right here shows me that he likes he, he can fight through blocks and his recovery speed was really good on this. Like he came through and he got pretty good block put on him by Brandon Sheriff there and he's able to recover and make that tackle. Yeah, he showed good field speed there, good game speed there. Now, this particular play right here was actually negated for an illegal contact penalty that I thought was, was kind of, you know, bogus, but whatever. I was going to show this play anyway because uh, Jamin actually gets a, a sack on this play, and it, it kind of sucks that this one was taken away because this would have, you know, looked a lot better on his stat sheet obviously and he had some real good pressure there coming off the edge and I really like what I see with this guy when he gets a chance to, to rush the quarterback uh, it, it, it didn't happen much on Sunday oddly enough he didn't get any hurries even though I, I did see him coming through the pocket he actually would have, would have shared that sack there I believe with uh with Deron Payne, but still they hit home on that play and it didn't even end up, you know, counting. And that kind of sucks. I hate when that stuff like that happens, man. I'm pretty sure that Jacksonville realized pretty early that they had a mismatch going on with Travis Ntn and Christian Kirk on the field, both of them. And at least portions of that came from Jamin Davis not being able to cover either one of them. Now this one right here, obviously, you know, they got picked or whatever. They got screened or whatever right there a little bit. But a little bit of that also comes with uh, Jamin over there with the concrete boots on again. He just, yeah, man, he's just not good against the pass. Watch it from this angle. Just you really couldn't see it from that angle much. He just looks like he caught the ball down the field. Again, he looks good when they allow him to put pressure on the quarterback. 
NTN actually chips him a little bit and saves what would have been a sack there because he was going to get it. Um, and Lawrence gets the ball away. It's a horrible throw. It actually might have gotten tapped there. I think Deron Payne might have tapped that. And here's Christian Kirk making Jamin Davis look silly. Which, quite honestly, I, I expected if those two ever got in that situation where he was trying to cover him, that that would be what would happen because Kirk is, you know, he's he's got that he's got that side to side. I just don't see Jamin being that kind of defender especially not against the pass man but in the open field like that Kirk's going to you know do that to a lot of different players now this is the play that Derek Forrest got that forced fumble on and I want you to see the pressure that that uh, the Jamin Davis puts on this play and I believe this pressure is probably what led to him throwing the ball in the open field like that and not taking a look I want to look at that again and not taking a look further down the field and seeing if his receiver was protected because generally at least good quarterbacks look down the field and try to make sure that their receivers are not going to get hurt uh, by an oncoming defender you know looking to basically run over them or, or whatever the case may be which he didn't pay attention to there just coming from this angle for this play right here here's Jamin if you can't see um, this right here is just a, a another example of him I think he needs to beef up a little bit because he looks a little light in the ass going against Brandon Sheriff Brandon just kind of pushes him around like, wait a minute, I don't even, I'm not even sure that was Brandon. I think that was Brandon. But yeah, he gets pushed around by, by uh, it's Brandon Scherf, I'm pretty sure. And it, I mean, he can't recover to that. You know, some defenders could, could run right over Sheriff, but he is not one of them. And um, against the run, he's generally really good, but there was two guys there and he, you know, he can't take on both blockers. I love how William Jackson kind of stood stood back and let him, you know, take the blunt of the main guy. <laughs> smart. You know, that's smart. Now, you just know when Christian Kirk lines back up at that at that line of scrimmage and he's looking across at Jamin Davis. You just know inside of his brain that he's owning Jamin Davis at that point because there's absolutely no way that that man's going to be able to cover 13. It's not going to happen. And then you, you watch the play and you're like, well, you know, I, I, I kind of saw that coming, you know, like, I mean, do you really, <laughs> why would you even attempt doing something of that nature? Like over and over again, like what did they say the definition of insanity is? I mean, it, literally he almost scores a touchdown on that y'all. And you know, Davis couldn't do nothing with him. Like he comes around that, 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 that corner right there. And he literally almost turns that into a touchdown. If he hadn't have stepped out right there, that would have been a touchdown. And that's all on Davis not being able to contain the edge right there. Everybody else did their job but him. Watch it from this angle and see if you can see a better shot of it or if you can see a shot at all. Somewhat. And then the attempt he makes to try to tackle him is not that great either there. Or push him out of bounds, I should say. His coach, you know, should have been able to see that that was just not working. Now, before I start this play, take a look at this guy right here. I'm clicking on him right there. Like, watch him in this play. Of course, Jamin's over here, but watch him in this play as he makes his, you know, makes his turn or whatever. And I believe if Trevor Lawrence is a better quarterback and is more, you know, aware to what's going on, this is a touchdown. Watch this play out. Now he goes the other direction. But if he would have thrown it inside, I believe that would have been a touchdown. Did y'all see that? Look, number 26. Watch it again. That would have been a touchdown if he'd have been paying attention. Touchdown. That, that's points on the board right there. He wasn't paying attention. He threw it to the back of the end zone where Derek Forrest was at to stop the, the, uh, the guy from getting a touchdown. But... 26 was wide right there all because you know davis gave him too much and then wasn't ready for that cutback he's just he wasn't athletically you know gifted enough to make that cut on a dime like that he's just he, he's not he doesn't have the field savvy yet to be able to see a play like that coming watch it one more time and then we'll watch it from the other angle yeah i mean that's a touchdown right there 
That's a missed opportunity for the Jaguars. Watch it again from this angle and see if you can see it again. Yeah, that's a touchdown, dude. I mean, any way you look at that, that's a touchdown. If Lawrence is looking across the field and not locked in on his guy on the side, that's a touchdown. Thankfully, he was locked in. Not sure what he thought he was going to get throwing it at, at Forrest over there. Why he didn't pick on Davis across the middle, I'll never know. Mom, it's that bad man again. And he just he just keeps on doing it, man. Like, you know, boom, boom. I mean, it's child's play to Kirk. He, he doesn't even try. And then he misses him again with the arm tackle. Watch it from this angle. Child's play. I mean, it's simple to him. If, if you're a commander's coach, how do you not see that and put somebody else on him? Like, I mean, all he did was give him a little bit of the business. He didn't even give him all of the business. So let me just first say that I think it's kind of early to say that Jamin Davis is a complete bust. Looking at him through the, the, the lenses of was he a good first round pick, I'd say right now the jury is out on that, but I'm leaning towards no. He probably would have been a better second round pick. But I would look at it as more of a, a thing in motion than something that's already, you know, decided. One thing's for sure. I am not certain why Ron Rivera and the Martys or whatever you want to call them they sound like a, a bad, like, 50s rock band. But why those guys did not go out and try to tackle the linebacker position a little bit better and bring some, you know, some guys in so that they didn't have to go to the garbage heap and bring somebody back that we already know is not up to snuff, is a guy that we don't want. You know, why they did that, I don't know. Uh, why they didn't, you know, try to dip back in the draft and pick another linebacker. There were linebackers to be had. They didn't necessarily have to take anybody up high. They could have taken somebody midway. So to me, that's a head scratcher. And obviously they had their opportunities in free agency. You have to wonder why. I've said it for a little while now, but it, it, it kind of looks like maybe they're a little bullheaded. And they think that they could take anybody and turn them into this great linebacker because you know both of those defensive main defensive coaches or both of our main coaches are defensive minded guys that come from that cloth and they feel like you know oh i could turn this guy into a football player or if he has the right traits i could make him into anything and i feel like that's the reason why we still have cole holcomb which is actually a good thing because i believe holcomb has progressed into something and davis possibly will you know progress into something as well but right now they need something that's better. And what I'm hoping for as the season goes along is that he'll get better and he'll progress to a point of where, you know, he won't be a liability in a lot of these situations. And I also feel like the coaching needs to get a little better. Maybe they do need to use the nickel packages more. Maybe they need to use dime more and less linebackers on the field would be a good thing because hey man let's just call it like it is if the guy can't cover the guy can't cover right what they say if it walks like a duck and, and quacks like a duck but i'm not going to shut the book on him quite yet although i will say that the signs are not looking good he needs to improve and fast the bad part about it is is i believe the overall success of that defense could be based on how good he does and i'm sure other teams have already seen that film and they're already sitting over there salivating just waiting because each each team has a guy that has a set of skills like kirk you know i'm not saying that each team has a guy that they pay 20 million dollars a year for for a, for a wide receiver but each team has a weapon like that you know a guy that can make the cuts and the turns and the moves and it, kirk's not even the best at that and i don't like i said before i don't even think he pulled a lot of what he has out against Jamin Davis. He didn't even have to. But I'm definitely going to revisit Davis again at another time later on in the season and see where his progression is at. See where he's at in his game. And, you know, maybe get a, a little different perspective at that point. Now, folks, let me know what you're thinking about Jamin Davis right now. Do you, in your mind, already like look at him and think he's a bust? 
or do you think he needs more time before you can make an accurate you know judgment in your mind also in my next video i've got some things planned where i want to look at uh, some things that detroit does well and that makes you know things work for them and i figure i do a little opposition research and look at some all 22 for them so stay tuned for that video anyway that's all i got for today y'all take it easy peace Thank you.